Welcome to Refresh, our twice weekly thought for the half week summer series about refreshing. That's quite a mouthful. If you come up with a better way to say that, please let me know. But hopefully you get the idea uh, of what we're doing by now. Uh, last time we were thinking about receiving, about one of the pathways to refreshing being the fellowship the family of God, the shared life of God's people together. And I want to roll straight off the back of that uh, into this one and think about friendship as well as fellowship, friendship. Today's word is relate. God has designed us as believers for fellowship. Uh, we have a shared life together, a common way uh, with our local church, with the global church, uh, with the church on earth and the church in heaven. Uh, there is this family, there is this people, uh, there is this group that we are a part of. And that's so refreshing to receive, uh, for others to re receive from us in, in fellowship. But within that then, there will also be a call to friendship, to walk with a smaller group of believers. Uh, it simply isn't natural, is it, to share everything with everyone. I mean, no, nobody really does that in, in a healthy kind of way. Uh, there are those then who, who walk with us in tighter fellowship, in closer friendship. And whereas we should be open to that kind of friendship with anyone that God brings in our, into our lives, uh, there are those that have a sense of, of connection uh, with us. And those things are not incidental. Those things are important. Those things are, are, are precious. And not just to us, but to God. When, when God sees us uh, having a deep sense of friendship together, he delights in that. When part of me is blessed by another, by a friend, God is thrilled about that. And when a part of them is blessed by, by friendship with me, uh, God just, just delights in that. We're, we're made to relate. Uh, one passage where we see Paul talking very passionately about this is when he's writing to somebody that he's mentoring. It's a different kind of relationship, I know, uh, but to someone who becomes a friend, uh, to a younger pastor called Timothy. May the Lord show mercy to the household of Onesiphorus, because he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. On the contrary, when he was in Rome, he searched hard for me until he found me. He's often refreshed me because he is not ashamed of my chains. I wonder how many people, when they found out that Paul was in prison, has dropped him as a friend because for personal and social and all kinds of cultural reasons it was a bit embarrassing. It would have an impact on uh, whose neighbour's kids wanted to play with your kids and who would do business with you and all kinds of things. And Paul knew what it was to have fair weather friends who dropped him uh, when he went to prison. But here is somebody who says, it refreshes me because he is not ashamed of me. And to have friends who are not ashamed of you. Uh, friends that you can really share failures and weakness and struggle with is such a gift. And the challenge, I guess, for us today uh, is not just simply how do we find good friends? Because I think you find good friends by by being a good friend. How do we relate to people in those ways? On the contrary, Paul writes to Timothy, this guy sought me out. You know, when, when he came to Rome, he, he came looking for me, which would not be an easy thing in a world before sat-navs and Google Maps and WhatsApp messages and, and Facebook updates and all those kind of location services. To find somebody in Rome would be a big, challenging thing. But he looked for me, Paul says, and when he found me, it was just such a blessing to be found by him. Uh, and that's 
something that we're invited into within the fellowship and outside of it those kind of unashamed friendships you know, those friendships that do the leg legwork of, of looking for us and of finding us and, and refreshing us so we have tools that Paul didn't have in his day we do have WhatsApp and Facebook and Messenger and all kinds of ways that we can relate together We're it would do us really good just to have a look at those things and to ask the question are these things refreshing me or are they draining me uh, am i refreshing others through them because they're tools aren't they on their own they're neutral but the way in which we do them can either drain others uh, and discourage others or can refresh and encourage others and i think another key question uh, that we need to ask is how do we find friends like this who are unashamed to do, do the legwork well the challenge here is until we're willing to lower the masks and to really let people in to those things that others might be ashamed of uh, those weaknesses those failures those struggles those challenges uh, how will we know that we have friends who will be with us through thick and thin until we're willing to let them in to those thin and thick places uh, in, in our lives. When we come to church, when we go to small group, uh, when we catch up in, in all kinds of ways, how much of myself am I really bringing? How much am I really sharing? And as, uh, as others begin to share the challenges, the failures, the frustrations, the struggles, how much am I willing to listen and enter into and share in? Because as we relate, as we see Jesus in others, as we share Jesus together, uh, that is so refreshing.